I love technology and there's days I just love to hate it. They have these little solenoids on them. Uh, here's my 2020 precision planting monitor. It's tied in with my iPad, my egg leader controller, my John Deere controller, my clean sweep sucked to these little holes. And here is a singulator. So these are the row cleaners here. Darn that Murphy and his laws. Good morning. It is Sunday morning. And I'm actually gonna go try to spray a little bit of corn quick. Just getting the sprayer loaded up. Got my chemical kind of on top of the forklift there. And uh, it's not as fancy as some setups out there, but we do have the inductor tank there where we put the chemical in. And then we have a whole valve system over here that we use to uh, suck the chemical either out of uh, totes like that or the inductor. And I can have three totes set up to it. And it's all metered out through a meter. It's kind of like a poor man's version. I designed it myself, uh, but it works really well for us and it's pretty accurate. The reason why I have it like this uh, today, this is simpler. Kind of a rammy, in a rammy mood, I guess you could say, and uh, it's an easy way to do it quick, so. Uh, the sprayer should be loaded up here shortly and we'll head to the field. So we got going here finally after a few technical difficulties. Uh, I love technology and there's days I just love to hate it. And <laughs> today is one of those days. Uh, just a few small things, uh, the GPS which uh, I used and let me know where the sprayer is in the field and it also uses the GPS information to shut my nozzles on the sprayer that put the chemical out on and off and also steers for me. Uh, so I was having problems with it. My iPad still doesn't work and I can show you that here shortly. And then I had uh, a nozzle that wouldn't work. They're fancy nozzles. They have these little solenoids on them. And what it does is it uh, helps keep my pressure constant all the time, no matter what my ground speed is. So it's called a PWM valve and I, I forget what that's, a uh, pulse width modulation. Uh, is what it stands for and it basically turns the solenoid on and off like this to maintain a pressure uh, so that in windier conditions I don't have really a small high pressure uh, particle size I have still larger coarse pressures no matter what my ground speed is not really complicated but it's just uh, to explain but uh, it's a pretty cool technology I really love having it I really hate when it doesn't work uh, because those solenoids I just showed you can be a little sensitive. So I was talking about my nozzles. This is the monitor that looks after my nozzles. And that blue line there is going through 54 nozzles and making sure that they're working right and that they're doing exactly what they're supposed to. This monitor down here is hard to see. Does all my spray controlling and my uh, auto steer. And then the iPad up here, I use field view and it just basically is it records the data and puts it up to the cloud uh, so I can watch or keep track of different things. So that's kind of uh, the controllers in here and then that's kind of just a, one I use for my tank level. Uh, but this is the one that's pretty cool because it's the one that will actually shut my nozzles off on and off automatically and I'll show that when I get to the end of the field here and you can see them kind of go off on that blue line So that's it, nozzles all shut off automatically. We're playing away here, it took me a while to get the headlands done and headlands, what we call here in Ontario or on our farm is just kind of the outside rounds along the edge of the field and also the ones along the front and the back of the field that we turn on to go back and forth up and down the field. Uh, this farm is a hundred, well sorry, this farm is 90 acres uh, and with all the headlands planted, basically it gets us to uh, almost 20 acres. So uh, a lot of acres to be planted into headland, uh, which is fine. We got that done and it uh, went fairly well. 
and uh, just letting everything run on my planter here. I know there's been lots of videos on YouTube about how planters work and stuff in the cab, but uh, here's my 2020 precision planting monitor that kind of monitors the job that the planter's doing. Right now we're doing about 34,000 seeds per acre. Our singulation's almost perfect. The spacing as it hits the ground and in the soil is good. Our downforce that we're running here is all good. Uh, usually when something's wrong here, it goes yellow or red and it starts beeping at me. Uh, but for the most part, it's been pretty good. And it's this monitor is tied in with my iPad. And like the sprayer, uh, it uses the field view and it kind of tracks where I have uh, planting errors or skips and doubles if I want to or hybrids or down pressure, all the different things I can monitor down here. I can pull up on the screen here uh, if I want to go to applied downforce. That shows how much downforce we're running right now. Uh, we're actually lifting the row units up because there's a lot of seed in them and they're heavy. So uh, that's whatever happens here. Like I said, I can see it up here visually. And then down here is my egg leader controller that does the auto steer uh, on this side and it's a split screen. And then we have what we call a universal terminal or virtual terminal. And then this is the Alari cart uh, running on this side. So right now we're putting on 187 pounds of fertilizer per acre. Uh, and it's kind of just doing everything here and telling me what I'm doing. So and this is just my John Deere controller where I got four or three remotes engaged right now. Uh, this one. Here is running my downforce, hydraulic downforce on the planter to keep the planter units in the ground. This one here is running my Alari cart uh, and the metering rolls on the fertilizer. And this one's running my vacuum fan on the back of the planter to suck the seed to the, the disc that we use to plant the seed. And then this is just the scale head here that tells me how many pounds I have in the in the Alari, so right now we got about 11,000 pounds, and that's my clean sweep for running my row cleaners in front of the planter units. That's kind of a real brief, condensed uh, kind of idea of what I watch here in the planter. Uh, if you're really interested in how the planter works, I can get into a lot more detail on a, a wet day or once we get through planting. Uh, and we're not using the planter and our workload is kind of quieter I'd be more than happy to walk you through of how my planter works because it's all tied in with this uh, Lari's fertilizer system and it's kind of it's one unit the way I use it I can't split them apart uh, into two units but uh, when I'm planting they're kind of tied together so a little bit different than some because of the capacity on the dry fertilizer uh, but uh, leave a comment below if you're interested and I can do that. Uh, I haven't been able to keep up with comments as much as I want to. We're just busy in the field right now. Uh, I do have to say I know it's a bit past but uh, I got through the poison ivy. Uh, thanks everyone who sent uh, ideas and uh, ways to deal and combat the itch. And uh, just really appreciate everyone uh, following along on the channel. Uh, we've been trying to get a little bit more videos out than uh, I have in the past and uh, appreciate uh, people who are uh, just new to the channel and watching things so hopefully you enjoy. My mom told me never to pick up hitchhikers. Do you think Sandy would be offended if I didn't pick her up? I think I'll just keep going. I'll just wave hi and we'll just keep driving. Okay, back at the shop in the yard here at the shop, getting some more seed fertilizer and liquid fertilizer. Uh, and you can see we ran it down pretty low. So we got about 30 acres left in that farm. So what I'm gonna do is put uh, eight bags in of one variety, four of another, and we'll do a side by side and see which one's better. Okay, the seed's in, now we just gotta get some starter fertilizer, pop up and furrow into the front tank here on the tractor.
Well, hopefully we uh, accomplished something there. I'm a little rusty on my uh, drone flying skills, so we'll hopefully get some good footage out of that. But uh, got some uh, special polarized lens covers to do a little bit better job making uh, drone videos. So that's why I haven't done any lately. So first one of the year. And I'm a little rusty. We've got uh, three more passes left here in this field, and we got 80, well, I guess 90 acres planted today, which is uh, a pretty good day. The one thing I might have done differently or would have done differently on this farm, uh, we jokered it on an angle, not a very s steep one. So if this was straight, it was maybe like that, which is hard to tell, or maybe like this. This is straight, it was on an angle like that. And it's just making the planter kind of go like this and I didn't think it was going to be a problem but it uh, and it's not everything's planting fine and just next time I use a joker pretty sure I'm gonna go straight up and down uh, and go parallel with uh, the planter pass that's the only thing I think I would do different uh, with this joker on the bean stubble but hopefully next year most of the stuff is all strip till and we're planning to sail strip, so it's not a problem. It's been a pretty uneventful day, which is fantastic. Other than my sprayer this morning, I think I got all my bad luck out of the way early. And uh, planting's been good here. We only, uh, I missed getting it on film. I only had a stone grab in between a couple of my closing wheels. And, uh, and the drone footage you might see at the very back of the planter unit where the hopper is, uh, there's 12 of them, there's little, wheels that are on an angle that close the trench after the seeds planted in it and sometimes you'll get a stone in them and they'll jam and then they just push they drag uh, a trench and it's not good not good at all so I didn't catch it until I turned around and saw this dark groove in the soil and just hopped out quick and got the stone out of the way so sometimes I'm amazed how they pick up stones and you look at it and say how the heck did that do that but it's the same with cultivators. Sometimes a cultivator tooth uh, will grab like a chain. And you think of how big a field is and the odds of grabbing a chain that gets stuck on the point of a cultivator. But anyways, I digress. So I think I'll just uh, get this field finished up, get things ready for tomorrow morning, and uh, we'll hopefully get a good, good start tomorrow. Monday morning. Kind of sad, to be honest. I just got these nice Carhartt bibs like a week ago. And uh, I was taking a battery from the shop that I was charging in and overcharged and there's a little bit of battery acid on the side and it dripped. And I got holes. Sad day. So I'm gonna get back to planting today uh, in a little bit. I was kind of hoping to let it warm up but I don't know if it's gonna warm up much today. But uh, waiting on some fertilizer to show up. I planted more yesterday than I thought it was going to I planted till 11 o'clock last night and got 110 acres planted yesterday so I ran out of fertilizer so we're gonna get the drill off the one tractor that we we're working on Friday with and put it on the joker again and we're gonna joker some of our last work ground that we haven't done yet because we've been letting it dry out for a while so uh, it's ready to go now and we're gonna get that done today so we can plant it tomorrow this last field we have to plant or the very last one I'm planting it's only like 37 acres but uh, it needs some fertility, so we are gonna have to get the spreader back on the loader tractor uh, Probably tomorrow and get some fertilizer uh, brought in to spread that field and then we'll work it in Just to get the nutrient levels up and see if we can get that field to perform a little bit better. It's wet It's not tiled and it's kind of got springs in it. It's on a hill. And I don't know why springs end up on hills, but they do and I think it's just gravity somehow pushes the water out in different spots, but it finally looks like it's dry enough that, as I said, we can work and uh, get it planted. And they're talking snow on the weekend, which is not good, but not much you can do. And we'll just get what we can get done. Okay, I got Jack set up on the Joker. I got the planter all vacuumed out and starting to put my last side-by-side uh, -side variety trial in. So what I do is, because I have an eight row corn head, I put eight rows of uh, one variety in and then four 
on the outside of the planter so that when I go back and forth I basically have eight rows, 16 rows, eight rows, 16 rows and then with the combine because it's an eight row head I'm able to match those varieties up and then do yield comparisons uh, by weighing it off in the green buggy that has scales on it or I can use my software program to look at the analysis as well or I can use field view on my iPad and draw some squiggly lines and do some analysis that way. Uh, the one thing I am doing right now is uh, row unit 12 is the only one that's kind of giving me a little bit of problem where the singulation isn't as good. So it's maybe planting more than it should and it's been showed up on the monitor. It's not bad, but I just saw it since the planter's empty, uh, we'll take that row unit off and take a look at it. So got it popped up right here and I'll switch you around and I'll show you how uh, my seating discs work. So this is a vacuum planter and what happens is that this hose here comes from this manifold up here and it creates a vacuum uh, suction and what it does is suck seed to the disc plate or the seed plate uh, that's underneath this cover. So I'll pop this cover off and we'll take a look at it in the inside. So what you have here is a seed disc and on the this side of it here uh, seed actually gets sucked to these little holes and you can see it says corn here upside down but this is a corn plate and uh, it's driven by this a little electric motor here so that's how I have individual row shut off is that the monitor says to this motor stop turning and this disc stops turning and it stops dropping seed out so I think this is a 27 cell disc that we use for corn and uh, yeah, you just take this cotter key out or cotter pin out or snap ring out and switch a disc for another style. There's soybean discs, there's edible bean discs and we'll have to do that when we start planting edible beans. We'll take the corn plate out and switch it out. But yeah, this is what drives the uh, meter here, which is a, a V drive. And this is a V set classic precision planting uh, uh, setup. And here is a singulator and what this does is that it's supposed to knock off any time that this disc has two seeds on it or maybe three seeds. It goes through this little mechanism here and it knocks the doubles off and so it only leaves a single seed on this disc. And that's how we get good singulation. Uh, so I'm just kind of looking at everything here to make sure it looks good. And uh, I can't see any problems. Sometimes uh, these might get jammed up, but it looks like it's good. And the seed disc looks good. So I think we'll just put it back together and keep an eye on it. One thing that we always try to do is keep our units on the same row unit. So how that works with a planter is row one is way down at the far end on the left if you're standing behind it and row 12 is the farthest one on the right standing behind it. So what we actually do is even hoppers. We mark the hopper, we mark the drive, and that way we can keep everything kind of in order so that there's consistency year in and year out that if we have a problem, um, we can isolate it a lot better because we know that we've always put the same meter and the same hopper uh, on the proper row and that's uh, just how we like to do it anyways. So that's a quick look at how uh, my meter works on my planter uh, and I'll finish putting the last variety in here. I got four bags to put in and the planter's ready to go. One last thing I gotta do before I hit the field is my closing wheels. So these are the things that close the trench. Uh, these little Dawn wheels uh, tend to grab some stones so I'm just going to go through here and knock a, knock a few out uh, before I head to the field. Okay, an update from this morning. We uh, are back in the field here. We got the front uh, field of this farm planted over there. And now we're in the back field. So this farm is about 98 acres. Uh, it's got like a river going through the middle of it. So uh, the front field is what I did this morning. I finished up there kind of just after lunch and then now I moved to the back field. 
This farm is always a pain in the butt to plant because there's only two straight sides on this field and they're the fence line, fence line on the west and the east of the farm. And they're both also the shortest uh, straight lengths. So I actually plant the farm the other way and it just makes for a lot of headlands or point rows or end rows, whatever you want to call them. So I basically have to go around the whole field three times, which gives me 90 feet. And then that gives me enough room to do the turning and all the other stuff. So I just finished that. I'm on my first straight pass up the field. It's quite the topography. It's probably our highest elevation on a farm uh, and most elevation change. And that's kind of why we plant it long lengthwise because it stops the erosion. Uh, if we plant it kind of up and down the hill, it erode really bad and we don't want to lose soil off our farm. So we do it the long way. And uh, with all the fancy technology we have, like the row shut off motors I showed you in my planter units this morning, we're able to do all this fancy stuff because it stops seeding when it's been planted and it starts when it isn't. So it's all automatic. If all goes well, knock on wood, we'll be done planting corn tomorrow. So good days. Darn that Murphy and his laws. Uh, as soon as I shut the camera off, I broke a fitting on one of my row cleaners for the air and it leaked all the air out of my air compressor and without any kind of uh, air in the system, it can't hold the row cleaners up. I don't like having them down all the way because it tends to make a gouge and trench the soil and if we get a big rain, then the rain gets funneled down through that trench and it can wash it out. So I like to just to tickle the top off and I need some air to hold the uh, row cleaner up to do that. So. Sandy's has come to pick me up in the truck and I'm going to go home and get a new fitting because I've used up all the ones I have here in the cab and I thought about it before I left to come back here but I didn't grab any. So these are the row cleaners here and uh, this is a line that came off. Got to get a new one. That concludes today's festivities. Got the Spreader hooked back up to the 6R there. For first thing in the morning, I got the auger set up to the wagon outside. I got my fertilizer delivered this afternoon. I got the Alaria cart filled back up for tomorrow. I got all the starter in it. And these, if all go well, will be the last 24 bags I plant in 2020 for corn, which is a good feeling. So I'm going to head for the house, grab something to eat, go to bed, get up early and uh, Hit the uh, farming button in the morning.